Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hello, my name is Caroline. My pronouns are she, her, or they, them. I'm an interdisciplinary artist. Interdisciplinary means that I work in more than one artistic form. My artistic practice includes new media, video editing, contemporary dance, and choreography. This month at Arts Starts Explorers, we are exploring textures. Today we will be talking about three-dimensional shape making in a digital space. So let's explain a little bit what it means for a shape to either be two-dimensional or three-dimensional. A two-dimensional shape has only two measurements. This could be a length and a height. A square triangle and circle are all examples of a 2D shape. However, a three-dimensional shape has three measurements. This could be a length, width, and a height. If you look around your room, anything that exists in your space is a three-dimensional shape. Let's spend some time identifying some of the objects around us Awesome. Okay, so please click on the link is in the description and it will take you to Figaro. Figaro is a 3D modeling tool that is online and free. Please note that this works best in Chrome browser. Safari will work but it may have some lags. To begin, we will start by clicking Start Modeling Now. Awesome. So when you click on that, you will arrive to this space. Let's zoom out a little bit. To do that, you're going to click two fingers on your trackpad if you're working on a laptop and move it back. To move forward, you're gonna put your two fingers onto the trackpad again, and then scroll in. If you have a mouse, this may be the actual center part of the mouse where you can scroll. So let's try that again. Scroll back and scroll forward. What happens if we want to face a slightly different direction? You're going to move your mouse to another direction on the grid and you're going to move back and forward. So do you see how I'm now on the other side? So again, if I'm facing my mouse on this side, I'll move back to this corner. 
And if I move my mouse to this side, I'll move back to the opposite corner. There we go. Awesome. So make sure you get yourself situated in a space that works for you. Okay. So now we are going to play with some two dimensional flat shapes to begin. Please click on the grid button here and start by dragging and you will see it will create some shapes. You can create as many shapes as you like. I'm going to make a floor here so that I have something that my object can sit on. As you see, the colors are randomly being selected as I am creating the shapes. If you want to change the shapes to different colors, click on one of the grid blocks, change the color, and click apply. Let's try that on another one. Maybe I want it to be green. And click apply. And maybe I want this one to be a bright blue. And click apply. You can choose as many or as little colors as you'd like. Make this one orange here. It looks a little bit too brown. I can make it a bit more peachy. Awesome. Okay, so spend a little bit of time choosing the colors. If you have more than one family member sharing a computer, please remember to take turns here. It's so fun to collaborate with each other. Feel free to move your cursor around so that you can make it work for you. Whoa, I double layered that one. So you see I've made almost the entire floor and I feel like for now this looks like something I like. I'm going to spend a little bit of time changing some of the colors to make them a little bit more what I was thinking. What are some of your favorite colors? Feel free to pause the video and spend as long or as little on this as you like. So now, when you see that I click onto these different grid panels, you see these arrows that come up. There's one that points upwards, there's one that points to the side, and then there's one that points forward. These different arrows describe the different directions that we can move these tiles that we've created. Let's do it in a little example of what that looks like. Maybe I want to move this tile towards me. Or maybe I want to move it back. This can be a little bit tricky if you're using a trackpad and not a mouse. So feel free to take a little bit of time to explore and play with it. We can move it up. Whoa, now it's floating. And now we'll move it back down. You can put it below the ground. Really, you can make it however you like. You can see here, I accidentally put one underneath. When I scroll to the side, I see that that is grid 22. Because I don't feel like I really need that one, 
I am going to right click onto the screen and click delete. Now it is gone. Decided maybe this gray one is a little bit too dark. So let's make it a brighter blue. Awesome. Feel free to sc scroll around and see what you've created so far. Awesome. Okay, we're going to start with our next exercise, but feel free to pause the video again if you are not quite ready. To do the next exercise, we are going to create a 3D donut. How funny, I know. So, to do so, we're going to begin by clicking on the Taurus button. I know, what is a Taurus? A Taurus is a shape that is kind of donut-like. I'm going to click on the screen and scroll my mouse out to create the size of Taurus that I want. Oh, that was a big one. It took up my whole floor. Perhaps that's a little bit bigger than I wanted. I'm now going to click onto the Taurus or donut, and maybe I'll start by changing the color to something that I like. I'm thinking something, do I want red or do I want yellow? I love yellow. Yellow is my favorite color, so I'm going to choose yellow for now. Feel free to choose whatever color you like. Okay, now to make this a little bit smaller, we're going to click on the button on the left side of the screen here called scale, just below move. Similarly to the move button, there are three different ways that we can scale it. To scale it means to change the size. So we will start by making the side a little bit smaller. And if we click this yellow button in the middle here, it will actually do the all three sides at the same time. So maybe we want to do that to begin and make it a bit smaller. I'm now gonna click on move and move it upwards a little bit because it is sitting below the floor right now that I've created. Awesome. You can scroll out a little bit, scroll in, see if that's the spot you want it on the screen. If you're working with more than one person, right now you could create two of these if you'd like, or you can work on the same donut. Totally up to you. I'm going to click on scale again, and I'm going to make my donut a little bit more flat. So I'm gonna click the green one and move it down just because I want my donut not to be quite so squishy. Feel free to make your donut as big or as small as you like. zooming in to check it out. You can see, you can get very close to it. Awesome. Okay, so now that I feel like I'm happy with where this is on my screen, I'm going to click off of it. I'll be able to check out the full image so far. What if we were able to move our donut to the other side of the screen. Let's do that now. Or maybe we want it to be a little bit closer. Awesome. Now comes my favorite part of this tutorial we're gonna to get to decorate the donut. So we're going to click off of the donut quickly. You can choose either a cube, a rectangle, or a cylinder, or even a sphere to decorate your donut. Let's think of them as 3D sprinkles. I'm going to choose a sphere. I'm going to click on the sphere and I'm going to click on the space and I'm gonna make something kind of small here in the donut. Uh, let's make it about this size. 
and I'm going to release. Now, you can see I have one little sprinkle there. I'm going to click on it and make sure you click on it and not just the donut here because they will change depending on what you click on. And you're going to want to change the color to whatever color you want. You can change the scale of it if you want it to be a little bit bigger. Maybe I want it to be a bit more flat. And maybe I want it to be this is more of an oval shape now. I'm also going to click on move and move it up a tiny bit just because mine is sunken a tiny bit inside my donut. Isn't it funny that you can put things inside of other things here? Let's click off of it and see what it looks like so far. Now I have a blue singular sprinkle on my donut. Feel free to play around with these different sprinkles for a little bit here and make some decisions. I'm going to add a rectangle, but you can add whatever you like at this time. Remember the process of clicking onto the donut, making it about the size that you like, and then releasing. Now I'm going to move mine up a bit because this one is a flat object, so we don't want it to go inside. I'm going to change the color to uh, maybe a purple this time. Awesome. And maybe I'll click it on scale and I'll make it a little bit bigger, not that big. And maybe I will make it a little bit less wide. There we go. So now you see I have two sprinkles. I'm now going to click on cube. Why not? Let's make a cube. Whoa, and you see that one was very interesting. When we click on it, you can change whatever color again that you like. Maybe you want it to be a theme. Maybe you want them to be all different colors. Totally up to you. I'm going to scale it to make it a little bit less tall. Maybe I'll make it just overall a little bit smaller. I'm going to click move and maybe I'll move it a tiny bit over this way. Great. Now we're going to try something a little bit different. Because the theme of this month is textures, we're going to play with what it means to smooth the edges on a rectangle. Interesting, I know. So we're going to click smooth, we're going to click on that object, and you're going to click OK. Now we're going to click off of it, and now look, it's a smooth object. Very interesting. I might move it a little bit to see if we can make it a bit bigger now, or scale it, sorry. Maybe I want it to be a little bit larger, and then maybe I want to move it to the right a little bit. Now I'm going to click off of it, and now we see it looks more like a sprinkle a little bit. Very interesting. This started as a cube, and now it is smooth. This time I'm going to click on a cylinder. Do we know what a cylinder shape looks like? Wow, so interesting. Make sure we take turns with our friends or family again if we are in a small group sharing a computer. I'm going to make this one purple as well. Maybe I want to make it long and less wide. Let's go like this way. That way. Whoa, it's a bit big. Great. Maybe we'll make it a little bit thinner. Great. Now, we're going to try something a little bit different here if you want. If you feel comfortable with what you're doing and want to just continue making sprinkles, feel free to do so. But if you want to rotate this cylinder that we've just created, 
feel free to follow. Please click on the rotate button on the left. Okay, so now you see these circles and how they are the different colors that are similar to when we use either scale or move. If I click on one of these, it will rotate the cylinder in the same direction as what these circles are making. So the green one will move this way. The blue one will move this way. And the red one will move this way. Feel free to play around with this a bit. I may move mine slightly to the front and I might make it slightly smaller too. Now let's try something slightly different here. I'm going to click on to this blue one. And what if it's possible to mirror it? And what does that mean? Well, let's try. If I click mirror, it will give me this option. Here is the axis, which is X, Y, and Z, which are length, width, and height. You can choose and play about where you would want it to change. I am going to choose axis Z. When I click on that, now I have two. Maybe I'm going to click on it again. Or click on this one beside it and click on it. What happens if I change it to the X? Now I have another one. And I'm going to click on move. I'm going to move this same one that I've created. So because this is this way, we need to move it slightly. Oops. So if you ever make a mistake like this, you see I just moved the floor. I'm just going to come up to this arrow up here and it will undo. Now I'm going to move this one up this way and maybe I'll move it along this axis here and now I have them on either side of the donut this can be a fun way to duplicate the same thing that you've made and move it around to a different spot maybe I'll move this one as well because I accidentally have a couple there moving it around can sometimes be a little tricky so be patient with yourself So for this donut, I'm exploring it this way because this is what I'm curious about. What are you curious about? Are you making something similar to mine or are you making something different? I feel like there is a lot of value in us having differences and similarities. So make sure you spend a little bit of time identifying why you want to make it in a different way. Now spend a little bit of time playing and seeing what you're curious about. As you see, I just made a bunch of cylinders here and it almost looks like a snake. Or maybe a, a caterpillar. And click on this and move it.
now that I'm happy with what I've made so far, I'm going to take a little bit of time to think about what I like about what I made and what I've learned so far today. Today I've learned how to make a floor with many different colors in a 3D space online. I've also learned how to make a donut with different colored sprinkles. And I've learned to make a creative shape here on this side. As part of the Explorers program, we practice making and not keeping, but we always keep what we've learned with us. I really liked how I experimented with many different colors today. What did you like about what you made? What did you learn today while you were making? So I'm going to right click on my mouse or trackpad and then delete. Now I'm going to click delete. Just take a bit of time to take this all apart. You can either click into the side here or you can click on the object and it will highlight on the side. Make sure you just right click on your, either your trackpad or on your mouse to delete it. Delete, delete, delete. I'm very proud of the object and the image that we made today. Awesome. Now I have a blank canvas. Another way you can do that is just to click the X here and it will close your scene here. Thank you for joining in and learning with me today. Feel free to play around further and explore what interests you.